I just want to get some housework out of the way first. If this is your first time, thanks for giving me a chance. I really appreciate it. If you're liking what you see, please hit the subscribe button below. The bell will notify you when I post another video. If you've been here before, thank you. And on the line of thanking you, I can't thank you guys enough for your response to yesterday's video. I am completely floored. I cannot believe this video that I posted yesterday to try to help you go to sleep in a whisper has gotten almost 2,500 views. And I'm now up to almost 270 subscribers. I, I, I was hoping to get to 50. I was so happy if I could have gotten there. So I am grateful beyond grateful. I cannot thank you all enough. I do this for you because I have received so much from the ASMR community. I want to give back. And as I've said before, my niche, niche in this is an older relative, a favorite aunt, a big sister. Let's stick with favorite aunt, okay? I'm going to be your favorite aunt. And I've learned a lot in life. I've made a lot of mistakes. And I'd like to try to save you from making the same ones and basically just tell you what I've learned. And if it helps you, bonus. If it doesn't, keep looking for something to help you, okay? Because that's all I want for you. Okay, so I think that's all the housework out of the way. Let's talk about your anxiety, all right? Anxiety is a very hard thing to have. I suffer from anxiety. I also have social anxiety. And I'm gonna be honest, when I first found out I had anxiety, I was embarrassed. I tried to hide it. And when they said they had anti-anxiety medication, I was so, I felt almost like I had failed somehow. And then I gave myself a smack in the head and called myself a hypocrite because that's what I was acting like. I am the first person to tell anyone that mental health issues are the same as physical health issues. You didn't choose to have them. You have no control over getting one, okay? If you broke your arm, you would go for help. Okay? If you're having anxiety issues, go for help. Okay? And it's hard sometimes to find the right person to ask for help. Maybe you're too familiar with your doctor. Maybe your doctor knows your family and you don't want, you're not ready for that yet. Find another doctor. Go and find the mental health support in your community. They'll help show you the right place. If you're lucky enough to live in an area that has public health, they have great resources that they can help you with. You can try your clergy, you can try family members, trusted friends, okay? You are not alone. Even though you may feel like it, even though your anxiety is making you feel alone, you're not. I promise you you're not. And if you're looking at videos to help you feel better and help you feel less anxious, you're already asking for help. You're already searching for your own help, okay? But there is nothing wrong with asking for other help, okay? I also suffer from social anxiety and people who know me would laugh in my face if I said that. However, I'm only comfortable once I get to know people and even then, I spend hours after I see people replaying conversations over and over in my head. And I tend to berate myself. You should have said this. You should have said that. They weren't really listening to you. You were boring. Um, what must they think of you? You know what? I'm starting to learn to blow that off. Whew. Blow it off. Get rid of it. Just let it go. Okay? Um, and there's always, always, always hope. In fact, here, sorry, my ring hit the table. This is a little lock I got just at the dollar store. And it actually came with a, a bunch of them, but I ended up, <laughs> I gave some away and some I just dropped on people's gardens. Um, 
we started doing that during COVID. My very, very good friend uh, left me a rock that she painted. I still have it in my garden. Um, so I have this one that every once in a while I just hang on to. It's not for luck. It's just to remind me about hope. H-O-P-E. And my daughter, bless her, taught me a wonderful acronym for hope. I want you guys to memorize this. Hold on, pain ends. Hold on, pain ends. Okay, your bad times will end. There are good times ahead for you. I promise you that. Okay? And you're not alone. I care about what happens to you. I really do. Okay, so I'm not a doctor. Um, I'm only going to share with you the anxiety strategies that I've learned that work for me. Okay, so one of the first things I learned, I actually learned from a TV show. Um, I think it was both actually, but it's saying random numbers. When I'm in the middle of an anxiety attack, when I feel that tightness, when my hands start to sweat and tremor a little, um, when I feel that heat rising, I say random numbers, 17, 28, 3, 1,290, make them random. From what I understand, the rationale for your brain is that your brain is expecting logical numeric um, patterns. So when you're giving it something else, it's kind of leaving the anxiety part and going into that, okay? That's one thing I do that tr that sometimes helps. Um, the other thing I do, I learned from um, my daughter's school. They did a presentation on anxiety and mental health. And she brought home this booklet and we call it the 54321. Now, you can mix this up as much as you like, okay? This is how I do it, but if you wanna swap some of the senses around, that's fine. So when I'm starting to feel anxious, I start with the five. I look for five things that I can see with my eyes. And I can see the trees blowing in the wind outside my window. And they're just swaying back and forth. I see the stained glass window that used to be my mother's that we gave to her and that it's now hanging in my window. My cat's scratching post that I'm now realizing I should probably get a new one for her. Um, <laughs> I see that I need to vacuum under our table. And I see a little two statues about this big of a little old couple. And when I got sick, I gave them to my husband to show him that I promise him we would be that little old couple have a date with him when we're 80. Well, when I'm 80, I rob the cradle. He'll be 78. <laughs> and we're going to jump naked off a deck, off into the lake. And hopefully we'll get arrested and embarrass my daughter all to heck, but that's, that's a future plan. Okay, so now I wanna do four things that I can hear. I can hear the clock behind me ticking. I can hear my silent dishwasher running. <laughs> I can hear my dog Candy snoring. She's just over at the end of the couch. And I can hear, I hear a bird at our bird feeder. Um, and then we're gonna do three things. I can smell. No, it's not. Three things I can touch. And there's a reason for that. So I have this leather coaster, and I love the sound it makes. I know I don't have nails, but I did paint them for you today. Okay, I have my phone case that I have to uh, take my phone from. Why is it opening? Oh, there. I have to take my phone out to uh, film, and this one is like holographic. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it has like a, it's 
scratching sound and a tapping sound and inside and one more thing to hear what can we hear i can hear this book this is a sound i like To love those books that you'd flip like this and there'd be a picture drawn inside it and that always reminds me of this so i do like that sound um, now we can do i don't know two things i can smell one thing i smell is the cleaner that my daughter used on our counter this morning um, she wiped it down um, um, she had done um, a big cooking project for her school and she wiped it down this morning before she left, which I appreciate. The other thing I can smell is my snoring dog. Hmm. Somebody needs a bath. No, I didn't say bath. Don't worry. <laughs> and then the last thing, what can I taste? Well, I did just brush my teeth. yourself say you have to take a bio break which I find is a nicer way than saying I'm going to the bathroom um, but take yourself out and nobody's gonna argue with you if you say you have to go to the washroom what I always find if they're gonna just kind of hold your stomach and they're like oh go go so go in the bathroom and do this for yourself okay and like I said if you'd rather um, touch five things and see two things it's up to you this is for you, okay? This is just um, a tool in your tool chest, okay? Another thing that I do that helps with my anxiety, and I hope it's gonna help with yours, is visualization. Now, please, if you haven't watched the video that I did yesterday on um, whispered, help you fall asleep, I talk a lot about the visualization with the chalkboard and the elevator. Please listen to those. Another one that I recommend highly is visualizing that you're an artist. I don't care if you can't draw a stick figure. In your mind, you're drawing. All right. And I want you to really see the paper and see the element you're using. If it's a piece of charcoal, if it's a pencil, a paint, a pen, a crayon, I don't care. See yourself drawing the picture. Don't think about the end result or the end picture. Think about the process. Think about how much you're enjoying the actual seeing the picture come to life in front of you. A lot of times when we focus on the outcome, we lose the process. And sometimes that's what's going to make us anxious because it's basically jumping ahead, okay? We need to take one, st one step at a time, one foot before the other. That's all we can do, okay? That's all any of us can do. Some of us may have bigger strides than others. No biggie. We all just take one step at a time, one roll at a time. If you're on crutches, one crutch at a time. Take it slow, okay? It's not a race, okay? And if you hear nothing else, my darling, you deserve to feel calm. You've earned your calmness. Anxiety and panic are something everybody feels, okay? Unfortunately, some of us get it worse than others. We're working on ways to deal with it. And I cannot stress enough asking for help. Okay, I always find that the people who ask for help are the strongest people I know. Okay, so really, just by choosing to watch a video to 
help reduce your anxiety or to help you relax. It proves that your eyes are open, that you see where you want to be. And this is just one step in getting there. Okay. And another thing I find with, I'll tell you a little story about anxiety. And it's just a funny little story that happened to me. I, when I was in school and here in Canada, a few years ago, many, many years ago, we had grade 13. And grade 13, you finished to go to university. Grade 12 was for college. I was in grade 13, and I was in the play. We were doing Moliere Schools for Wives. And what people didn't know, I wanted to act so badly. I love the stage. Um, and I've always said I have the soul of a singer. I just don't have the vocal cords. Um, but I had terrible stage fright. I would throw up before going on stage. I would shake. I would sweat. Um, everything. So we had to get measured for our costumes. And I'm 18, 19 years old. And I did not like the number that I saw. So I went on to the first of many, many weight loss regimes. And I lost a fair bit between the measure and the day of the play. And I had a very long skirt and it had like a taffeta belt that went around and it was too big. So I said to one of my friends, I had a big safety pin. And I said, can you pin this so it's tighter for me? No problem. She didn't know, and I didn't know, that a pin in taffeta goes right through it. So, during my first scene, I can feel something heavy at my ankles. And we were trained, you do not react to anything that wasn't in the play. So there's no way I was looking down. But it was starting to get heavier. And my family was in the third row to my left. And I could see my brother and my cousin laughing. Now I assumed that what was at my feet was the person beside me hat because during rehearsals it kept falling off. I glanced down, it was my skirt. And I was wearing a little petticoat that was completely open at the back. I didn't know what to do. So I stayed in character and just hyped that baby up just like my character would. But it wasn't going to stay up. At the scene, we then leave and have to burst through a door. I just dropped the skirt and burst through in this petticoat. And I said, under no circumstances could I turn around. I managed to do it. I did, however, catch a glimpse of my family. My poor sainted mother had her head in her hands like this, like, what have I raised? My father, my brother, my cousin are laying on the floor laughing, but I never lost my character. My teacher told me she'd never seen someone control an audience like that in a, at a high school level. And she gave me a 90 for that year. So that was an embarrassing, mortifying moment. And that should have kept me off the stage for the rest, never again. Okay, I never became an actress, obviously. Um, and this is completely unscripted, so it's nothing like acting. But you know what? Okay, that happened. And it's not the worst thing that could happen to someone. But it happened and I got through it. And I'm sure people aren't going around going, oh my God, I saw these bright pink underwear she was wearing. Um, it didn't matter. I panicked and worried. And afterwards I cried. They had to redo my makeup for the second um, act. And I'm like, why? Why are you crying? The teacher said that to me. You got through it. And that's all any of us can do. It might be hard. It might be mortifying. It might 
make us feel less than we are. But we get through it. Right? Because what does this say? Hold on, penance. Okay. And you've got this. You deserve to be calm. You deserve to be anxiety-free. You've earned it. You really have. You've struggled and you've worked so hard. And I am so, so proud of you. Please, please be proud of yourself. I hope this video helped you. If nothing else, have an eagle at me and with my skirt around my knees and ankles on the stage. And always remember this. Okay? I love you. I value you. I honor you, and I am so very, very, very glad that you were born.